Hello, it's my honor. Uh, this is Yiming Liu. Uh, I'm from product team, big data team. So I'd like to share some uh, thinking uh, today, uh, the trends we observed this year and some key innovations we follow these trends. First, let's take a few seconds to go through the, the past years of the big data innovations, especially the big data from uh, Alibaba teams. We found three main uh, technology paths. One is from the, the massive parallel processing uh, paths. That typical technology, including the Teradata webcam, uh, they introduced the uh, coordinate storage. The second one is from open source world. Uh, open source world, such as Lucent and Hadoop, they are always accelerating the big data innovations. The third part, uh, we call it the cognitive data house. So they typically including the classical uh, research paper from Google and the systems such as BigQuery and Snowflake. So they build the data warehouse solutions for our products on the cloud from day one. Alibaba Big Data uh, studied since 2009. At the beginning, it's an internal service uh, designed for the scalable uh, data processing. So it has shared various architectures and takes full use of the cloud electric resource. Now, we released this big data system to the public in 2013. And then we extend it to the global region very soon. Uh, in the recent three years, we published the cost architectures and uh, also real-time warehouse progress. Okay, you see this picture before. So this is Alibaba Big Data and AI portfolios. And they have two main parts. One is OTPS part, another one uh, is open source side. So the OTPS part contains two um, engines. One is Max and Two. It's done for uh, scalable data processing. It's a serverless architectures. Uh, it has the warehouse. Another one, Holograss, is designed for the interactive analysis and also the uh, real-time processing. So they are all fully managed online service. On the other side, the open source side, including the free electric like search EMR. So, and, uh, and also more the open source uh, software stack. So our developers can use their familiar uh, experience to use the open source software and which is the most scalable or easy to use cloud infrastructures. With the data works, so we provide the one stop big data governance and management platform. So we provide the job scheduling, job development, a monitor, and also the uh, data governance. And also we have the pipe, the machine learning of AI. So we have end to the AI engineering platform. So the developer can do the data labeling, uh, model development, model training, model de uh, deployment. So this slide introduces how we build the two engines. Uh, we do not have enough time to go through every details, but I, I can share a few interesting, interesting parts. For the maximum field, the most important part is the serverless architectures. Uh, that this platform can schedule the cluster resource uh, for the jobs, depends on the job in, input size. So, uh, and also can extend the underlying uh, resource uh, on demand. So that reduces the Operations cost a lot. Another part is the holograms. Holograms uh, is uh, the most important part in the subsection query latency and uh, real time ingestion. Since the computing resource, uh, uh, computing resource is pre allocated before the query is coming, so we can guarantee the query latency and the uh, uh, real time data availability. I have five trends I'd like to share today. Uh, the first one is how native data warehouse will help you reduce the cost significantly if you use it the right way. The second is uh, serverless architecture brings the uh, uh, efficiency and availabilities. The third one is lake cost openness. Talk about how to enable the data warehouse uh, into data warehouse openness into the next level. The fourth one is every data warehouse should be intelligent data warehouse. The last one is how to how to how the big data should be the AI infrastructures. Let's see how the cloud native data warehouse uh, help you to reduce the cost. The cloud data warehouse, the price may be not cheap, uh, but they, may, they all provide uh, a multiple flexible pricing model. If we if we choose the right price model, we can get a better cost. Let's take an example as an example. We provide a full price model. The basic one is subscriptions. Uh, this is most used. So it is in this Python, uh, you don't have to pay the, uh, pay, pay, the uh, pay the price 
for one year or one month in advance. And no matter how much actual demand, the allocated resource and expense are fixed. The second one is pay-as-save goal. Uh, the jobs could get the actual resource uh, on, on demand and it could, uh, it could extend to thousand community units in just a minute. To mean the business agility and flexible. So there is no cost if no use. But sometimes the cost is out of control if the job submit is out of control. The third one is elastic subscriptions. So this model combines the resource reserved and elastic uh, sharing. User could define some elastic uh, time unit uh, for the high workload, such as uh, you can uh, define uh, a much, you can require much more resource at the mid time for the ERT jobs and reduce for the level of load at the daytime. This way we can save the cost compared to the, the, the first one by removing the wasting part. The last one I introduced, it, we call it the spot job. This is a new feature. So we introduce a low SRA jobs. So this job is designed for the timing sensitive jobs such as the history data loading or a developer debug. So um, maybe this job may wait for a little, a little long time if the cluster is busy. So you could consider which, which scenario fits into which price model. Sometimes the, the choice is not easy, but we can help you. We introduce a new feature called cost optimizers. With cost optimizers, algorithm will analyze all the past three days jobs and figure out the most matched resource plan. The first step is set up a baseline. Okay, here. The baseline means uh, the most important job should finish before the baseline. Here, for example, we set 6 a.m. as the baseline. At the beginning, we reserve 1,000 the unit and all jobs will be finished before the baseline. But uh, there is some waste of time. And second, we reduce the, the complete unit to the 700. Okay, in this time, there is no enough resource and some jobs delay. Okay, that's not a good plan. But at last, uh, with the cost optimizer, we analyze the pipelines. We propose, okay, you should elastic much more resource before six and reduce the, the resource after six. In this plan, okay. No jobs breaks the baseline and the cost saved 24%. Let's see how we reduce the cost at the storage side. So, both my computer and Holographs has their features, uh, including the tiered storage and the colonization storage. So, with the tiered storage, okay, um, we could select the storage time for each table uh, for the most recent update of hot data. We could use st standard storage. And if the data is only upsized one or two times in a month, you could select the low frequency data storage type for cheap price. And for some compliance requirements, some achieved data or audit data will be saved for quite a long time. You could select the long term storage for better price. So you don't need to move the data out of the OTPS, you just set the parameter for that table. Okay, it's very easy. The red part is the semi structures. So, uh, in the past, uh, without the native JSON format, uh, you have to uh, save the JSON data, most of the, the log data, into a speed format. Uh, you have to decode the, the whole JSON tree body uh, if you only read only one field. That's caused a lot of resource. Now, we have the native JSON type and also the columnar storage. And this type includes the built-in compression and index and provide 20 times faster than before. So developers do not need to decode the JSON into flattened uh, table format. And this, so it's a good way to balance the flexible and the performance. The next trend I'd like to talk about is how SOLAS brings the efficiency and the available. As I mentioned before, the maximum period uh, is a fully serverless online service. There is no shutdown button. Uh, the service uh, is locked down. Messenger has a multi client and share everything at That means physically there is only one cluster for its regions. 
and that's, that part is managed by our professional SRE team to maintain the stability and the elastic. Uh, with these two architectures, now we enable the transparent upgrading without downtime. So all bugs are fixed as soon as possible, and new features will be rolled out fast. Also, we support the data backup and the disaster recovery for the high level scenarios. Progress also has a computing storage decoupling architectures, uh, like before, but not my compute. Progress is designed for interactive analytics and for online applications. So, so how to isolate uh, different workload is very key features uh, for the stabilities. We introduced the virtual, uh, virtual warehouse uh, solutions. For so these solutions, a user could define a different virtual warehouse for different workloads. Our warehouse shares a unified metadata. So there is a single source of truth, no data silos. Okay. Multi warehouse guarantees a high availability for the mission critical case and also this gives us a scale up concurrency. If you need the higher progress, you just uh, start new cluster and that warehouse. The third trend is the lake house of needs. So today I'm not talking about how to uh, upgrading the data lake upon the technology to, to into a uh, data warehouse solutions such as Google or Iceberg. I'm talking about how to provide the openness from the data warehouse capacity. In the past, the data warehouse provided the higher performance and strong management with native storage format and per engines, but that, that's not enough today. The openness is a key requirement for all data warehouse, so we redesigned next to, to do uh, more openness architectures. So in the storage layer, uh, we have the internal storage and we also can, can support the data uh, with open format from OSS and other relational database. On the computer layer, we have native agents, but we are also support the third-party agents such as Spark and Presto. They can access the internal data with new story API with high throughput, like the native agents. So in this way, uh, we give users much more openness and no vendors lock in. And if in the future, the new data formats and new, new query engines innovations could be integrated with magnitude very easily. The next trend is about the intelligence. Uh, so everyone talk about the intelligence. Every device warehouse should be intelligence. Our data warehouse take a, a give a, a few intelligence solutions, including the intelligence state layout. They have us. Uh, they have users to select the best plastic layout for the tables, and the intelligence results you see. Usage, as I mentioned, the cost saver uh, proposed the, the better uh, resource plan. In has an execution model, they have they identified the job pattern to select uh, to run the job in online model or offline model. The intelligence query plan can analyze the past uh, the finished job and generate a better, better query plan. And the last uh, intelligence computer we, we use it to figure out uh, the common use the job pattern and we use that result for the further queries. Let's take a little details. So with all these intelligent features, we got some great, uh, some good results for the benchmarking. Uh, take the example here, for my compute, we got the number one uh, in big data, TBC, uh, big data benchmark in the past six years. And the progress ranks number one uh, in TPCH 30 terabytes in the last years. So all these performance uh, improvements happens uh, in the query runtime, in the storage format, and also the hardware integrations. And today, you do not need to set up this optimization manually. Most of these improvements are enabled in engines by default. So everyone could get a good result. We have a new feature called the Intelligent Material Whereas Field, uh, short for MOE. Uh, the the MOE uh, is a uh, very typical technologies to do the space-time trade-off. So query could be accelerated by pre-calculated results. So query plan analyzer will extract the, the, the common sub-queries from all the, the past queries and generate the MVA suggestions. If the selection is selected, then MVA data will be refreshed automatically and there is no application code change. The new queries will be rewrite to the MVA and get to the query result. The last trend is to talk about how the big data uh, to, to be the AI infrastructures. 
uh, we know the most uh, AI jobs uh, has uh, the typical uh, pipeline from the data pre prep, uh, data pre processing, model development, model training, and model deployment. And 80 of the time is caused uh, as a data pre processing. So we are thinking about how to improve the, the efficiency in data processing. Since uh, most data scientists are familiar with Python, uh, so we'd like to provide the same uh, developer experience in Magnitude also. We provide the Magnitude notebook as a unified development environment. Uh, it supports the Magnitude social and also the native Python. The most used libraries such as the, uh, the Pandas and uh, the NumPy are also provided. We have a new module called Max Frame, so it can convert the circle result and the Panda data frames uh, transparently. And we bring the distributed execution uh, runtime for the pandas to give a better performance. So in this way, so both the scientists and data engineering uh, to start an AI project in the notebook very easily. The last one is talk about the large language models, uh, the very hot topics. So everyone is talk about how to build the customized uh, knowledge base. Here I introduce Photographs as a high performance and a high performance vector store. It provides a high throughput, low latency vector search, and bring full feature circuit interface. Our filter subqueries window operators are supported. So with the deep integration with the pi, uh, you just with a, a few click, you just can deploy uh, your own knowledge base on top of Holographs and the other open source large models. Okay, thank you. That's my share.